bring it Welcome to New Tech, my name is Miles and it's fantastic to have you here. In today's video, I'm going to do a wrap up of my CNC machine called Matilda. Um, some of the things that I have added to the machine since you've last seen it and some of the things that I'll probably do differently for down the track. So let's get started. So just before I jump into my wrap up of my CNC, I just wanted to do a huge shout out to Pete from Root CNC. He has supplied me with one of the best cards that I have ever used on a CNC machine. This one is the Root CNC controller. Now this is a fantastic controller and I liked it so much that I even went out and bought a second one for one of my other machines. So I'm really excited to have them um, over two of those machines there. If you wanna find out more about these control boards, jump over to his website. He also has a YouTube channel. You can also see it in my previous videos as well. Also a huge shout out to PCB Wave for milling my end plates for my CNC. They have made my CNC what they are today and I wouldn't have been able to get this far without them. So they have milled these end plates to absolute perfection and if you guys are interested in other types of manufacturing processes jump over to PCB Wave because they can offer pretty much any manufacturing process you can think of and they can do it to absolute perfection. So let's get on with the build. So I want to talk first about my dust boot design. Now this is actually the second version of the dust boot that I've designed. The first version was a fixed dust boot that went underneath the Z-axis. And unfortunately that just took up too much space underneath the Z-axis. Um, and I'm trying to keep that clear. So I went on to a second version of it. Now on my previous machines, I've used a magnetic dust boot so I can remove the, the head off it so I can change the tool. Now I wanted to do something slightly different because I have a much bigger idea with this machine for later on down the track and I can't wait to share that with you but with this automated version of my dust boot you can see that I've got two linear actuators on either side of the dust boot and they're controlled by DC motors um, and the idea is is that it just goes up and down depending on the output of the controller now there are some issues with using this type of DC uh, linear actuators is because it has to reach the full extent of the actuator before it stops and it's really hard to control the, um, the variation of levels depending on what tool bit you're using. So I wanted to change my idea and the next version I've actually used a stepper motor instead to move that up and down so I can get precise um, control over the height of the dust boot. And I also want to put a button on either side so I can put it up and down and it can set a certain height and also go with the automated version as well. So there's a couple of ideas there. Now, as you can see, I've put some clear vinyl on the front and the brush on the back and that works out pretty well. So when I did the spore board of the machine, you can see here that it does a really nice job of picking up all those very light particles. I mean, I'm just using a, a shop vac to um, collect all this. It's not like a special or a high working vacuum for this, but the shop vac does more than enough control over picking up all the fine particles and leaving the heavy debris behind. And then you can just come through and uh, vacuum that afterwards. So I'm really happy with this design. I'm going to keep this similar design for my next iteration. Um, I'm just waiting for my new 3D printer to arrive so I can go ahead and 3D print those new parts. In my last video, you probably saw that I had some NEMA 23s installed and that was a, a open loop system using TMC 2160s. Now I was hoping to trial the newer versions of those with these motor drivers. However, I got to a point where I kind of gave up on trying to um, think about different solutions on how to fix things and do different variations of things. So I just bit the bullet and went with a closed loop system. Now these are a fantastic um, closed loop system by Stepper Online. Um, they were really easy to install and they have like a feedback system which gives it the location at all times of where the motor is. So if the motor does skip a step, it will actually add a step or try and catch up to where it was. And if it does have any major issues, it'll actually pause the machine and throw alarm. So I really love this um, style of stepper motors. Um, and there's been a huge difference in the functionality of my machine. So going from a, I think it was about uh, 2,700 uh, millimeters per minute. So that's very slow in regards to what I've been using with my other machines. Um, and I really wanted something that would get a lot more speed out of this machine. 
The other issues with the motor drivers that I was using, even though they were a silent stepper motor, for larger motors, when you had to move them at a higher rate, there was this high frequency sound, which really wasn't very pleasant at all. So upgrading it to a closed loop system has absolutely changed my perspective of how I'm going to implement all my machines from now on. I love these closed loop stepper motor systems and this one from Stepper Online has just been an absolute dream to install and get up and working. So um, one of the things that I do find about these type of steppers is that you can run them at a much higher rate. So um, going from 2700, which was probably the, one of the maximum speeds that I could get at without the motor stalling at certain parts on my other motor drivers and motors, these ones now go up to about 14,000 millimeters per minute. Now that is excessive and it's not something that I actually want to have on my CNC. I don't want it to go that fast because it, well, it really terrifies me going that fast. So I've kind of capped it about 8,000 millimeters per minute and that's more than enough for what I want in my build and my machine. But it's just crazy to know that these can make such a big difference on your machine and what they can do. The other great thing about these type of uh, motor drivers is that they don't ever overheat the motors. So when I went to go touch the previous motors on my other system, that the motors felt really hot all the time. That's because I was running them at probably almost maximum the rate of the motors can handle. And they really weren't performing as they should. So going to this type of system, investing that little bit of extra money, this has been an absolute game changer for me with this machine. So as you can see here that the machine runs so much better now, so much quicker, so much faster and more precise. And I know that it's never gonna skip a beat and if it does, it will let me know for sure. So as you can see here, this is my top linear blocks for the top rail on the Y axis. And obviously that they would probably be more than enough to control this machine and to give it the force that it needs over that linear rail. Now, one of the issues that I did have when I was designing this machine is that I wanted to take advantage of as much Y axis as, as much as possible. Um, so essentially on a, a different type of machine where you want um, a lot more rigidity out of these linear blocks, you'd actually space them slightly further apart. And that's giving it that extra kind of seesaw effect where the further apart they are, the more control or the more um, force that they'll be able to take without having them closer together. Um, now to give them the extra strength, because I have put them so close together and I have such a high Z axis and a lot of weight at the top, I wanted something else just as a bit of assurance to make sure that this machine has everything that it needs to go forward. So that's why I added the extra base um, linear rail on. But the other thing too I noticed is that there is a very minor amount of play within these linear blocks and adding that second uh, linear rail is that it did give it that extra security and stopped any variations within the, in the movement. So that brings me to a second point that I had was I've had a couple of uh, viewers ask me if these files are gonna be available for download so they might wanna create something similar to themselves. I'm currently working with another couple of users to refine the design to make sure that it's ready for release. Um, and so one of the great things about this design is I'm actually open for it to use different um, parts to create this design with, but uh, essentially I'll be releasing the plates that are on either side of the X axis and on the, the Y axis. And especially for those people who like step files, they are able to manipulate it, add in what they need to and change it over that time as well. So I'm really keen to see where the community um, could take this project a little bit further. But um, at the moment, this has been one of the best projects that I have worked on um, so far, and it has had the greatest yield out of my design. Um, it has done everything that I wanted it to and even more. So, um, and besides it, it does scare me a little bit because of the, the, the size, the, the speed, and also the ability of what it can do, um, which is actually quite a positive thing as well. Now that's one thing that I absolutely love about this CNC is that I can control it directly from my phone 
or from any device at that. Now that is only possible by using a special software called Fluid NC. Now that's installed directly on the, the controller that I'm using. So I'm gonna jump into making something now with the machine and I'm really excited. I've only tested this machine once off camera to see how it went. I just cut a nine millimeter piece of ply and I'm really excited to see what I can do. This is an 18 millimeter piece of ply from the local hardware shop. And what I'm gonna be cutting now is something really special that's going to be part of a project that will be released at the beginning of next year. So I'm not gonna go too much into the project itself, but I'm just gonna show you it cutting um, for the second time of the lifespan of this machine. I have already surfaced the spore board. I have trimmed my Z axis to make sure everything is plumb and ready to go. So really excited about this because I haven't had a chance yet to do any major cutting. I'm going to cut quite conservatively for um, this first pass, but it should gauge um, how I can process things in the future. And I've also created these really simple hold down clamps. Now they're just using a hex head bolt. This is an M5 bolt and I've used my grinder to grind back either side of the, the hex head so they'll slip easily into the extrusion and when twisted they'll lock in and they won't be able to be released. So on one of my other machines that I've reviewed in the past, the Alien Fox, they had these fantastic hold down clamps. So I'm just borrowing it from that machine at the moment, but these work really, really well with this machine. I want to do a a couple of different types of clamps for this machine, but this is just your traditional hold down clamp. One of the type of uh, clamping system I have used on my other machines was the, the cam twisting ones, which um, pushes on the side of the material. Now, as much as that is an, a, an interesting and simple concept, I, I don't really like that system just because if you do end up milling out something in the middle, it will release that tension and that material will start to move around a bit and I don't really like that too much. So I'm going more with these um, traditional style uh, hold down clamps and I will develop some type of other clamps in the future. You feel free to sit back and watch this machine in action. I'm gonna set up this and send it off for its very first big job. So enjoy.